Why not two? There's lots that's of many different agenda items. For instance, NATO and the question of Swedish and Finnish membership of the organization. The finance minister of Sweden, Michael Danberg, says that, Na that Sweden does have the money if the country decides to join and would need to at the same time also undertake a massive energy transition. I didn't expect Russia to invade Ukraine, and that's changed the whole dynamic. dynamic. But of course, my family, my mother comes from Finland. My grandfather died uh, in the war uh, against Russia. My, my grandmother uh, had to leave my mother to Sweden because of the war that the Soviet Union attacked Finland. So we've seen uh, some of these attacks before. But don't you find it strange, bordering on a bit perverse, that Europe continues to spend uh, 800 to a billion a day on Russian oil and gas for whatever good reason? But at the end of the day, Europe is funding and financing the war. That's why Sweden is in a totally different position. We don't have any almost import of gas and very little oil. So for us, we don't have a dependence on Russia. Our energy system is actually 100% fossil free. And this transition away from fossil energy needs to take place now in Europe. I understand the significance of maintaining European Union unity. But at some point, hasn't someone got to say this is ludicrous? You know, Germany, Austria, Italy, you're going to have to take an economic hit. Mm. I think Sweden ha is in a position where we can say we are for stronger sanctions against Russia, but we also say that we need to have unity in Europe and with the Americans because this is the only way to pay, take pressure for, for Russia for real. Uh, and I think uh, the questions for, for Germany, Austria and some other countries that are really dependent on that, on energy, uh, their argument is that if they want to have public support for real tough actions on, on Russia for a long time, they also have to take that into account. Isn't that exactly the internal contradiction that's going to make it impossible to do, to do what is necessary? This idea of we know what has to be done, we just can't do it. No. For Sweden, it's not a problem to go further, and we're open for it, so it's not a problem. But it has to uh, hurt the Russians more than it perhaps hurts uh, Europe. Otherwise, uh, it might be counterproductive. The difficulty now, economically, is, is huge. Mm -hmm. Inflation, which I know you were telling me is not as high in, in, in Sweden, but, but the spillover effect from other countries, which is now starting to, to, to really affect yeah. uh, the labor markets, the mm -hmm. difficulties of dealing with economic policy in the now. It's more difficult. It's uh, before and after the invasion. Russia has really put the pressure on us. Do you believe that it has fundamentally changed the geopolitical mold, if you will? Yes, for a very long time. Russia will not go back to... Europe will not go back to uh, and US, I think, with the relationship with Russia as we have had for a very long time now. It's different, and that will influence the world. And I think the coalition between the United States, Europe, and other countries around the world is very strong during this uh, crisis. So I think it will continue. The issue, of course, for Sweden, amongst many of them, is one of NATO membership. Where do you think the nation is on this at the moment? We see the opinion polls. It's uh, shifting the opinion polls uh, more in favor of NATO uh, since the war, uh, the Russian war on Ukraine. Uh, this is a new security situation for Europe and for Sweden. So we have a, an inquiry, uh, a process in Parliament with all political parties involved, and they will land in a new analysis of the security situation for Sweden in mid-May. Once that's done and the public have spoken, when would you expect, for those of us who are not familiar with the Swedish sort of minutiae of, of policy making, when would you expect an outcome? Our process is very linked to the Finnish process because Finland is having their debate on the same question. So, so I think it's quite near in time. We have to make decisions both in Finland and in Sweden where to go. If you do join, that has certain implications for the budget the requirement to spend 2% of GDP on defence. Uh, what will be, how will you manage? First of all, all political parties have already agreed before the decision on NATO to actually increase spending up to 2% as soon as possible. 
So this is not a question when it comes to NATO membership. We will increase our defense spending to 2% anyway. So this process on, on finance uh, will continue in Parliament, uh, both when it comes to how fast we now pay off our national debt and how much uh, income we have to ensure to make the, 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 the increase in defense spending possible. Uh, President Putin's saber rattles, threatens. He's already said to warn Finland and Sweden, be careful, do not do this. Are you frightened? We're not frightened, but we know that he's been lying for, for months about the war in Ukraine. Uh, and we're prepared uh, and we're strengthening our defense, both now and for the future. And we have a great cooperation with Finland on security issues. And now we also have our security discussions on NATO. So, so for us, this is long term, it's strategic, uh, it, we will not be affected by what Russia are saying.